Um, now, uh, can free speech ever be dangerous, I suppose, is one way of putting it. Uh, I think, you know, always the balance with, with this debate is um, if we want free speech and we want that um, respected uh, and we want to uh, encourage a respectful engagement of free speech, which I think if you don't do that, um, it becomes... Uh, it, it, it really does go down that barrel of, uh, of, of hate speech. Um, but it comes with responsibility. And I think this, <laughs> this is always the issue. If, if you want freedom, you have to have some element of responsibility. And, you know, the, the irony of the whole debate about um, amending the Racial Discrimination Act on the back of the um, Andrew Bolt case, it wasn't because of uh, his opinion um, that he was he lost in the courts. It's because his facts were wrong, um, and that often gets lost. I'll just, I'll just make the point. Um, uh, Sarah, Change.org has just put out an online petition day calling for the Prime Minister to intervene to censure Alan Jones for comments he made uh, on the radio about the stolen generation. I mean, mm. do you think that crossed uh, some kind of invisible line, or was is he free to say these things? I think. Uh, you know, Alan Jones. I mean, I don't know if he's getting more and more senile day by day, but, you know... Wh well, I can tell you he's not senile. We've had him on this program <laughs> several times, and there's no evidence of that whatsoever. No, and, you know, he might, he might be offended that I've said that, but oh. he's a big promoter of free speech, so I'm sure he won't have a problem with it. Um, <laughs> I suspect he might. <laughs> but, but I think, obviously, to actually to go to the point, because it was, they were very serious comments he said today, uh, and I think extremely hurtful, uh, promoting the idea that we need to see um, a second stolen generation. In, frankly, um, there are, the, you know, Indigenous children at the moment are ten times more likely to be living out of home right now. Now, that is a, a shame on our, on our national character in terms of how we look after the next generation of young Indigenous people, and we do have to tackle that. And I don't think it's helped. Uh, by uh, really... Well, can I just say, very quickly, I mean, do you consider that to be a second stolen generation already? Because if so, it's happened under Labor and Liberal governments well, in the modern era. I mean, is that what you're calling it? I haven't called it that, Tony, but some people are questioning whether we've learnt um, from the mistakes of the past uh, enough and wonder how, uh, how much we really have taken on board uh, when we said sorry. But, but Alan's, Alan Jones's remark, I think, I think gets to the heart of it. You can, ob you can object to that. But in this particular issue, uh, I think that's the value of free speech. I think when you look at what has happened to Indigenous... I don't, I'm not an expert in Indigenous populations in Australia, but I certainly know a lot about it in Canada. That's a subject that is already hedged in and protected uh, by kind of tiptoeing on eggshells around the subject. And it would actually benefit from a more robust debate. And if you restrict that debate, if you end up with the situation that they have in Germany at the moment, for example, when what happened on New Year's Eve in Cologne, where there was a mass sexual assault, uh, and because it happened to um, contradict the official narrative, the police, uh, the media and the government declined to report it for over a week and cracked down on social media uh, on people who expressed opinions of it. Well, if people can't, if you can't say what you think about a subject, the only alternative is to punch yeah. somebody's lights well, out. Okay, if you can't I'm, I'm say sorry. what you think without yeah. vilifying people, then perhaps you need to think about whether you're smart enough to be making the, con the no, contribution. No, but, okay, no, so no, I'm, 